Good morning, students. In the first part, I talked about William Shakespeare. Now, let me summarize the things that I focused in the first part. William Shakespeare is universally regarded as one of the greatest dramatists of all the time. He was born at Stratford upon Avon. And he studied at grammar school at Stratford upon Avon. He married Annie Hathaway. He worked as an actor in London. He lived and worked during the rule of Queen Elizabeth I of England. And as you know, we too talked about some of his famous plays: Hamlet, King Lear. as you like it macbeth and so on and we too discussed the poem in brief all the world is a stage now before we move on to the poem sonnet 29 let me tell you about this poem in short William Shakespeare's sonnets are a collection of 154 poems. Love, beauty and time are prominent themes in his poems. In sonnet 29 he laments about his misfortunes, lack of the possession of wealth and the absence of friends. make him sad and he becomes envious of others who are blessed with the talent friendship and wealth in such a state of mind when he is not blessed with wealth that is fortune and friends he desires for friends and wealth but the absence of both in his life makes him sad and lonely now when he despises himself when he curses himself at that time when he feels jealous of others he thinks about his beloved and it is this presence of his beloved in his life changes his perception and attitude towards life the moment he thinks about his beloved and her love his misfortunes end and his heart fills up with joy pleasure and happiness now do you think would he feel jealous of others now he does not feel jealous of others because the presence of love in his life brings wealth brings fortune brings happiness in his life and then he does no more desire for any other thing any other position or luxury in life now first let me read the text of the poem and then we shall have the discussion on it sonnet 29 by william shakespeare when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes i all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble the heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my feet wishing me like to one more rich in hope pictured like him with friends possessed desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what i most enjoy contented list eight in these thoughts myself almost despising happily i think on thee and thee in my state like to the lark 
at break of day arising from sullen earth sings heman at heaven's gate for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that denies corn to change my state with kings in the first four lines we see that the poet is sad the poem begins with a sad mood and we see here that the poet is lamenting his miserable condition let us see what he is saying about his miserable condition he says when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes i all alone beweep my outcast state the poet says here that he is not blessed with fortune so it is a disgrace it is a shame and even he is not blessed with friends now when he thinks that he doesn't have fortune that is wealth and property in life when he thinks that he is not blessed with friends this thought makes him sad he feels all alone and beweep my outcast state he says then i start weeping why why does he start weeping when he thinks about his outcast state now there is a possibility that it has reference to his lack of work as an actor when the theaters closed in 1592 when there was an outbreak of plague so the poet is saying that when he thinks about his outcast state outcast state that he is not blessed with fortune and friends what does he do he beweep his state and then trouble the heaven with my bootless cries the poet here says then he troubles god with his prayer but what is the reaction of the god who is in heaven god has turned back on him so his prayer is of no use and trouble the heaven with my bootless cries bootless useless so when he is crying over his miserable state when he does not have fortune and friends he prays to god he prays to heaven but his prayers go unheard by god so what figure of speech is it trouble the heaven yes it is personification and what is personification personification is that figure of speech in which in animate objects possess or do have human qualities so here heaven is having ears and this heaven to whom the poet is praying that heaven is turned deaf he does no more listen to the prayer of the poet so the poet says when i think about my miserable condition that i am not blessed with fortune and friends i turn to the heaven i turn to god i pray but my pray my prayer goes unheard and then i look upon myself i curse my feet i hate my life so here the poem begins with a lament the poet is lamenting about misfortunes and his misery is heightened by these two things one that he doesn't have fortune that is property and second he doesn't have friends in life and he thinks that having fortune having friends is a sign of prosperity let us see what he has to say in the next four lines 
wishing me like to one more rich in hope now when the poet is beweeping his miserable condition that he doesn't he is not blessed with fortune and friends then he feels jealous of others he feels jealous of others the people who are blessed with talent hope and good company the people the people who are blessed with talent fortune and good company so the poet says i wish that i am like one the person who is more positive in life wishing me like to one more rich in home wishing me like to one more rich in home the poet says i would like to be that person the person who is more positive in life then in the next line he says featured like him like him with friends possessed the poet says here that i must look handsome like that handsome person and i must have to be blessed with friends the way he is blessed so i desire for this man's art i desire for this man's talent his skills and his scope his freedom that is opportunities so the poet says that i would like to be that person who is more positive in life i must look like that person who is more handsome i would i would must look like that person who is blessed with so many friends i must i must have this man skills that man skill that man's art and that man's freedom the scope and opportunity that the other person has with what i most enjoy contented list the poet says that he doesn't he doesn't have friends he doesn't have fortune so he feels all alone and this thought that he doesn't have anything in life this absence of friends and wealth in life makes him sad and even when he thinks about the people who are more talented the people who are blessed with fortune and good company even this thought does not bring me happiness now let us move on to the next four lines aid in these thoughts myself almost despising the poet says that all these thoughts come to my mind what thoughts come to his mind that he is not blessed with friends he is not blessed with fortune and this makes him sad and then he starts lamenting when but when he looks around he finds that people have talent they have skill they are blessed with fortune they are blessed with prosperity they are blessed with good company and when he think about all these things and he starts cursing his fate he starts cursing his life he despises his life he hates his life in the next line the poet says happily i think on thee by chance when i think about you and in my state then about my miserable condition then about my sad state of mind and when i think of you when i am sad i fly like a bird like a lark that flies at the break of a day from dark earth and then sings at heaven's gate now the poet says here that the way lark starts flying at the break of the day in the morning the same way when he thinks about the presence of love in his life when he thinks about the presence of his beloved in his life he starts singing at the heaven's gate again he starts praying god
worshipping God. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Now there comes a twist in the last two lines and there is a change there is a there is a change in the tone there is a sudden change in the tone of the poem in the earlier lines we see that the poet is lamenting and he is lamenting about what his misfortunes and what are his misfortunes that he is not blessed with money he is not blessed with property he is not blessed with skill talent opportunity and good company and this this makes him feel all alone and then he starts cursing his fate he starts cursing his life and when he looks around he finds that other people are blessed with so many things and he feels jealous for them and then he says i must have that man's skill that man's talent i must be positive like that man i must have his skill i must have his talent i must have the happy prospects in life the way the other man has now when he is thinking about his miseries his troubles his misfortunes in life suddenly the thought of his beloved changes his life and like a bird that flies in the morning at the break of the day from the dark earth in the sky his entire life changes his perception towards life changes the v the lark flies high in the sky and then he says when i think of you your love your presence in my life he says he addresses to his beloved and says when i think about your presence in my life when i think about your love in my life what does it bring to me it brings wealth now this love of his beloved changes his life suddenly and he does no more feel sad he does no more feel all alone and he does no more feel jealous of others the other people who are blessed with talent hope and good company and then he says when i remember you the thought of your presence the thought of your love the thought of the presence of your love in my life changes my life and it brings happiness it brings pleasure joy and this is permanent and when it brings joy happiness then i scorn to change my state with kings then he says then even then i would not like to be the king he feels happy what he is and he feels happy that he is having his beloved in life now let us move to the last part of the poem and it is conclusion volam shakespeare depicts his misfortunes in the poem his cries go unheard by the deaf haven that is god so he feels sad alone and dejected left with no friend and fortune he becomes envious of others who have it so what does he desire for he desires for talent fortune and the company of good friends at last his miseries and troubles end the moment he thinks of the presence of love in his life it is this presence of his beloved in his life brings joy happiness excitement all of a sudden it is just the thought of his beloved makes him forget his miseries then he does not want fortune money property wealth and even he scorns to change his state with kings this is how the poet celebrates his love in this poem and expresses his deepest feelings of love for his beloved so this poem sonnet 29 is a celebration of love that the poet is celebrating thank you